Hey, what's up? This is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today, we're going to build out this animation spinner, and we're going to use just HTML and CSS. And I'll show you how to build this in Figma and then export this SVG. And then we're going to add all of this uh, using CSS. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so I've got the Figma file open. I'm going to come up here and hit the little drop down arrow next to the square and select the ellipse. And then I'm just going to drag while holding shift. And let's get something, uh, I don't know, maybe like 100 and 155, something like that, just so we can see it easily. Then what we're going to do is add a stroke to it. And here, let's do a stroke of like 35. And um, let's go ahead and remove the fill. We don't need that. And just so we can see the difference, let's set this to like 80% opacity. And then I'm going to grab it and copy it and paste it again. And then grab this little arc and move it around and get, you know, something like that. And then I'll pull this all the way until it snaps here. And then it will snap back at 100% of the, uh, the kind of the, the, the circle next to it. Okay, so we've got both of those set now. What I need to do is just select them both with the shift key held down in the sidebar, and then I can right click and hit uh, group selection or hit uh, command G as well, that works. Next, I'll come over here and click export and grab this as an SVG, and then go ahead and just export the group. And I'm gonna save this as uh, spinner animation or something like that. All right, and then I'll save it. And let's go ahead and jump over to the code. So we've got the HTML over here on the side. There's not much going on, uh, and uh, we'll talk through this in a second. But what I've got over on the left here is an SVGO GUI editor. And SVGO is basically a tool that will minify SVGs. Most of the time when you're exporting from a design software, uh, they're not the most optimized for the web, so it's important to do this. So what I'm going to do is just open the SVG. You can also open it in your code editor and then copy and paste the markup right into here. Um, but I'll go ahead and do this and be right back with you. All right, I've gone ahead and done that, and you can see it shows it right here, but it also down below here shows that it's compressed it just a bit, about 25% or so it's compressed it. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy this now, and this just copies the code directly, and we'll paste it directly in the markup over here. And you can see it's now made up of a couple of different things. You've got the circle itself, and then you've got a path, which is this little line right here. And what we're gonna do is actually spin the entire SVG so it looks like just that path is moving around the circle. Now, there are a couple of changes we're going to make um, just to make it a little easier on ourselves. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and change this to uh, current color like that. And I'll do the same thing uh, down here for the stroke. And then I'm going to remove this stroke opacity and remove uh, this stroke opacity. All right, so by doing that, basically what we're going to do is allow us to control all those kinds of styling things in the CSS rather than controlling it in the markup. And I just kind of prefer to divide it like that when I can. All right, next we need to add a view box. We don't have that here by default, but adding it will allow us to scale this SVG uh, really nicely however we want to in the CSS. So I'm gonna say view box equals, and then here we're gonna give it four values. The top two, the first two, are telling it basically where to start drawing the SVG. So we're gonna tell it to start in the top left corner with the zero, zero for the X and Y coordinates. And then next we're gonna say draw the box that this SVG is drawn in all the way down to 155 and 155. What that's gonna do is basically make sure the height and the width of the SVG is the same as the view box that the browser is gonna draw it in. Let's go ahead and save this. I'm gonna jump over here to the animating spinner and you'll see that it shows up here. Now, obviously, uh, since we set, remove the opacity on both of those and we set them both to the same color, we're not seeing that path, but we'll bring that back in here uh, with CSS. Okay, so I've got that set up. Let's go ahead and come up this way and we're gonna add a couple of different things. Number one, we want to add a class of spinner to it, and that will allow us to grab this color. And now both of those current colors should use that color we've got set up. So I'm going to come in here and say class, and we're going to say spinner like that. And now it should take on that color like I just mentioned. All right, next, you probably want to add a class to this uh, for this, uh, let's see, this circle, because that's what we want to be opaque a little bit. So let's say class equals, we'll call it like circle animation or something like that. All right, and then we'll come up here and let's just select that. And here I'm gonna set the stroke opacity, which we just took off there to like 0.6. And that way, again, we can control everything that we're gonna do styling wise in CSS rather than the markup. You don't have to do that, but that's just kind of my preference. Now, how do we get to actually animating that? Well, let's go ahead and we're gonna add an animation here. So we'll say animation, and then we need to give that animation a name. And so let's call this uh, spin, and then we'll give it a time. So let's call this 1500 milliseconds. And then we need to give it some kind of direction on how it's supposed to animate. So what we're gonna say is we want it to be linear and we want it to be infinite. 
Now, in order for this to know what to reference, we actually have to do keyframes and then give it a name spin. And this name should correspond with whatever we named it uh, in the CSS up here. Now, all we need to do is basically tell it how to move around the circle. So we're going to give it two values. And the first one would be from, or you could also do 0%. We're going to say transform. And this will be a rotate. And we're going to start with zero degrees. All right, so don't start rotating at all, but go from zero de degree rotation to, or you could do 100%, that works too, 360 degrees. When we do that, you see now we get this nice animation loading, just kind of moving around like that. Now, you may not like that, and so let's go ahead and comment that out just so you don't have to watch that uh, as we code this out, but we're going to add a couple other things, and then we'll turn everything back on so you can see it all work together. All right, the next thing we want to add is the entire thing, we want to have kind of a pulsing effect. Um, so if I move back to the original, you'll see the whole thing kind of goes opaque uh, back in and out over and over again. I don't know if you can see that on your screen. So we want to add that, and I think that's a nice little touch to the whole thing. So if I scroll back down here, you're going to see that everything is inside a container. So that's what we're, we're going to use to basically add that uh, animation. So I'll come back up to my container class right here. We're going to do the same thing. So we'll say animation, and let's go ahead and give it the name of pulse. And then we'll do the same time, so 150 milliseconds. And here we will actually have a timing to it. And you can do this a bunch of different ways. I'm just going to go ahead and copy in a cubic Bezier curve. And this basically is just going to allow that, that animation to be a little bit more dynamic. You could also just do ease or ease out, something like that. Or you can copy this from the code pen if you want. And again, we're going to set this to infinite, so it just keeps going. And we'll save that. Let's go ahead and come back down this way. We're, we'll add another keyframe, and let's just copy this. Uh, to save ourselves a couple of keystrokes, and I'll call this pulse. Now, in this case, what we want is we want at 0% and at 100% to have an opacity on here. We'll say opacity of 1. So, in other words, be full opacity at 0 and 100%. And then about halfway through, so I'm going to set it at 60%. So, at 60%, uh, then we're going to set an opacity of uh, 0.8. So, it's just slightly kind of off the full opacity. So you can see now it's kind of pulsing in and out over this way. To make it more dramatic, let's do 0.4. And you can see now it really looks like it's moving in and out. You can set this to whatever you want. I'm going to set it back to 0.8, um, just so it's not quite as in your face, and it's just real subtle. And now we had one other thing, and that is we had these little dots that were animating. And again, you can do all that with just CSS. So I'm going to come back up this way, and let's see. Let's grab the paragraph actually down here. And what we're going to do is add an after pseudo element to it. So I'm going to say P, double colon here, after, like that. And now, in order for this to work, I have to have position relative on the thing that it's referencing, the, the paragraph itself. You probably want, would want to give that a class uh, in production. But we're going to go ahead and give this a content. It has to have this if you have a pseudo element like this, even if you don't put anything in it, uh, like we're doing here. And then we're going to go ahead and add an animation here. We'll just call this dots. And we'll set it to the same 150 milliseconds. And we'll do ease in and out this time for the timing function. And then we'll also set this to infinite. All right, now let's go ahead and come. Let's see. I guess we'll have to write it down this way. And maybe I can move the rest of those keyframes down here as well. We'll call this dots. And then we're going to have four different stages on this one. So we'll start at 0%. And in this one, what we're going to do is animate the content, basically. So I'm going to grab this content right here and just copy this down. And then what we're going to do is at 0%, have it at nothing. And then at uh, 33%, we're going to have it at a single dot. And then at 66%, if I move here, uh, we're going to have it at two dots like this. And then copy it one more time. And at 100%, we are going to have it at three dots. All right, so it's animating properly, which is great, but the whole thing is moving. <laughs> and that's because um, basically it's a real, it's kind of taking up real space on the page. So what we can do is come up here and say position of absolute relative to the paragraph. So now it's not moving, and we can do the final thing, which is to uncomment out that rotating spinning. So I'll do that right here. And the idea here would be like this would only show for a second or something like that as something loads, but it, it tells your user that something's happening. So hopefully this is helpful for you, and it's fun to kind of build these kind of slight UI UX improvements out. Because we added that view box, it's going to be really easy if we wanted to, to come in here to the spinner and say like a width of like 24 pixels, something like that, and it'll shrink down and scale how you would expect. If you like this kind of stuff, I'm doing 
projects big and small on my channel pretty regularly. The next one I've got coming up is this calendar event that we're pulling all from Google here, and you can actually set how many you want to show. And then we've got these random generated colors here as well. You can drop the stuff down and figure out more about it or link to the event. We're gonna build all this out from scratch, again, using the Google API. So if you're interested in this, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss that. The biggest help you could be for the channel would be to like the video, and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.